In today's video, I have a unboxing for you of a game that I've honestly been searching for for about two months, and we're just able to finally add it to my collection. Um, before I get into all that, I want to welcome everyone who's new. This is Board Game Impact. My name is Bruce Brown. I have a love of board games and everything related to the board game hobby, but I'm also receiving my PhD in human resource development, and so what I seek to do is combine that research and scholarly focus uh, to help break down some of the experiences that I am having in the industry as well as to provide you with that knowledge so that way you can make educated decisions for yourself and your gaming group. Now I do all this just to help and try and make my positive impact on this community that's already given me so much. And so this game, before I reveal it to you, is a game like I said that I've been searching for for about two months, actually just over that, wow. Um, I saw it at Board Game Geek convention in the fall in Dallas, which was a wonderful convention and where they have a library of about 6,000 games. So if you haven't ever been, highly encourage you to go. They've got BGG Spring in the, BGG Spring in the spring in May. Uh, tickets are still available at the time of this recording. And then BGG Con, tickets should go on sale soon. So while I was there, a friend of Board Game Impact and a, and a supporter of the show, his name's Justin, found this game, brand new game, on the shelves of the convention and pulled it off and with the gaming group that we had there, he, he showed it to them and I was very curious because it, the art on this game is phenomenal and that's always something that kind of lures me in and makes me ask some more questions. But just the way the timing of the convention fell um, and some other things we had going on, sadly we didn't get a chance to play it. Since that time though, I've done a lot of research and I should also say that that was towards the beginning of the convention and every single day that we then tried to check that, this game out for the rest of the convention, it was gone. There was two copies in the library and they were gone for all four days. And so I couldn't get my hands on it and so I just had that lingering uh, need to try and play this game, to learn more about it, just very curious. The art is different um, in a very interesting and fun way. Um, not provocative at all if that worries you. No, this is a very cool game um, and I cannot wait to get it to the table uh, and some more. And so what this game is, it's it fits a niche that I was missing in my game collection. Um, so personally, just a little bit about me, I love when games can create stories. I love when games can facilitate things in players, um, bring emotions out. Some of the mechanics of games can really help do that. I have personally found that one of the things that I like to and enjoy with uh, my gaming experiences is when games have an auction mechanic and that, that mechanic makes sense thematically to the game. So there has to be that. So the mechanic has to match the game, it has to have a reason for being there. And so that's why I enjoy games like Modern Art and others that have that kind of mechanic. And this game has that, but it's different. Um, I also have games that are resource management. Um, so where you're balancing the resources that you're harvesting or collecting or trading and then also trying to then use those to some strategic objective. I didn't have a game that combined both. Um, this game also brings in an element of, of a market and uh, supply and demand. So if you've ever taken macroeconomics and how the market can fluctuate between the supply and demand and then what is an adequate price point for those kind of, for the commodities that are being traded, this game fits all three of those things. That is something that I don't have in my gaming collection. When I think of a gaming collection, I think of it like having a wine cellar uh, which I used to work part-time in the wine industry when I worked, li lived and worked out in California. And one of the things that I quickly learned on the job while I was studying to become a certified specialist of wine is the fact that depending on what wine you pull off the shelf, you can create a different experience for those who are at the table. Um, so it might really match perfectly and balance with the meal that you're having, or it can dominate the show, and you might wanna do that at times, or it can take a back seat, or it could contradict. And so what I try and do when I think of a game collection, I try and think of, okay, what pockets am I missing that I can then bring out at the right times to then help facilitate different interactions based on the player group in the moment. 
So just so you know, that's how I kind of frame my collection. I'm curious to hear from you though, what are some games that you like to bring from your collection, no matter how big or how small your collection is, the fact is we like to do these things to be in the company of people. Uh, what games do you bring out in or that have really just helped make that experience just wonderful for you and your players? I'm curious, type it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and your recommendations. So without further ado, the game that I have to show for you um, just came out really published out in the last month, at least hitting the market. However, it's been available uh, to people since November because this game was also on Kickstarter. The game is a game by Forbidden Games and it's made by Glenn Drover and the game is Raccoon Tycoon. Let, let that name sit in for just a second. Raccoon Tycoon. And yes, there is an adorable raccoon on the side of this box. So immediately just the art on this box just popped, that red on the side just pulled me in, had, had made me ask some questions. I also like that they had a different type of printing done for the animal, so that way it actually has more of a glossy finish, uh, similar to like the oil slicks in Mechs vs. Minions on the board where it really makes it pop out. But just that landscape on the cover is pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to dig in here, open it up. It's a very tight fit on the box. It's got a lot going on though. And so inside the box, we have a lot. So this is what it looks like. Um, so first of all, we have the official, uh, essentially how to play rule book. It's called the Tycoon Official Handbook. Um, it says that this takes place in the Gilded Age in the land of Astoria. And so as we look through here, it just goes through the different rules, provides some simple examples. But this rule book is very streamlined and easy to follow. Uh, there's not that much to be left for the imagination. It's just very straightforward and some simple pictures to help illustrate the different types of cards and things. As for the board, the board is actually a rather small board. And on the board, it has the same exact artwork that you saw on the cover of the box. Um, however, up here, so I'll do it like this, up here you have a market. And so this market is going to delineate the different types of goods. And so what's going to be happening throughout the game is you're going to play cards to then um, increase this market into the market value for things like wheat, wood, iron, coal, uh, regular goods and then luxury goods. And if you notice, these numbers are not all the same, so things can be valued differently. And what's gonna be happening is you're gonna be collecting the commodities and then as you sell them, you will then, so if when you collect them, sorry, I'm gonna back up. When you, when you collect them, you're decreasing the supply, right? So the demand's gonna go up, so the price is gonna go up. When you sell them, you're gonna sell them at whatever the market value is for all of them. So if you sell five things at this $10, guess what, you have $50. But you sold five things, so you're gonna decrease it one, two, three, four, five. So now all of the wood in this case would be worth $5 a piece. So you're trying to balance like the stock market buy low, sell high, or at least to the best of your ability. Um, the bottom half of the board is where you'll have two decks. Um, so you'll have the railroad deck, the, um, the railroads, and then you'll put them out here. Sorry, actually, so it's the railroad deck and then the spots where you'll put the cards because it's an auction mechanic for those. And then your buildings and the buildings that are, the building stack and the buildings that are available for sale. Now, other things in the box, of course, this is unpunched since I literally just opened it, uh, but you do have some of the different buildings that are available, all of which have this back, except in the case of several of the buildings, which also have double-sided. Well, that one's not, of course, the one I pick isn't the double-sided one, double-sided. Other things that are in here, every single one of those commodities you have as actual wooden pieces. The simplest of which is the general goods, which are just a wooden box, because again, the woods look like just a wooden box. But all the other ones, so you have the coal, you have the luxury ones, which are honestly probably one of uh, the ones from my past life, so the wine bottles. Uh, this is probably one of the coolest little resource markers I've ever seen, and that is the anvil. That's pretty sweet. Um, and then you have ones for the other ones as well, the wheat and the wood. 
Now what's really cool about this is uh, many games include some sort of player marker, right? So who is the first player? In this game, they did not sell that short. They actually went with this giant raccoon wooden player marker. Um, so this is to denote the first player. I just think it's, it did not need to be this big, but I think it's really cool that it is. Other things you have going on in here. Um, so the game does include paper money. For those of you who are worried about this though, this paper money, it does not feel like Monopoly money. It's actually got a nice thickness to it. Um, but if you're interested, they do sell a uh, set of coins that you can use to replace this um, that all have the different animals. Yes, there's more than just the, the raccoon um, animals to represent the different uh, denotions of money. Then in here, we also have the deck of cards. So I'm going to open real quick. And these cards are two different types. You have missions and you have price and production cards. The game really revolves around these price and production cards. Um, every one of these has a price and a production aspect. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about before, where uh, you would increase the price if you, uh, so if you're taking the action of production, uh, you would then increase each commodity shown by one. So that's this top part. So that would be two coals going up. And then the production, the bottom half, you would choose three of them. In this case, there are four, so you choose three. And then you will take them from the supply and then adjust the market accordingly. Uh, now, there are some other aspects to this game. There's optional rules that you can play with, things like that I'm not going to go into. Um, if you want to check that out, just go to the Board Game Geek page for this and check that out. So the last thing I have to show you in here are the town cards and the railroad cards. These are tarot size cards, um, very wide. Sorry, I just want to open it up. Okay. So of course, here's the card. This is the railroad. I actually really like the backing on this, um, just the color of it, as well as the size, of course. But of course, the first one that's shown is that raccoon because that's the name of the game, right? Now what these are, it's an abstracted um, railroad uh, because you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to build railroads as well as build towns. Whoever has the most victory points, not money, at the end of the game wins. Now, if you notice on the bottom here, it's got different numbers. So the four, nine, 16, 25. And that means if you have one of them, you will get four points at the end of the game. If you have two of them, you will then get nine points, three of them, 16 points, four of them, 25. But if you notice, like this is probably some of the most adorable art ever. Um, so that for the rail, for the, te for the raccoon, which is pretty sweet. There's also the lady raccoon who's playing a little, um, I can't tell if that's a cello or just a violin that happens to be turned sideways because of size. I appreciate the top dog. Like these things are things that honestly would be funny to see in some different stores as actual art you can purchase. You've got the big bear. You've got the fat cat, which is also super funny because it's tossing up a thing of coin into the air. Uh, but of course it has to have that little monocle, right? Which is just adult, adorable. You've got the foxes. You've got the skunk works, which yes, are skunks. And of course the lady skunk, which that's just super Victorian, um, which is adorable. And then the other thing, the last set of these cards are the town cards, because as you're building railroads, you also are gonna be establishing towns to then supply those railroads as well as have a reason for the railroads. And so the railroads have simple, uh, almost animal-esque versions of Thomas Kincaid art. Um, now this is not like Thomas Kincaid, whereas you change the lighting in the room, the art's gonna change. But just the nature of these pictures is very Thomas Kincaid-esque. Um, and I gotta say that uh, Jacoby O'Connor and Annie Stegg, who did all the art on this game, did just a phenomenal job. This one's really cool. You can't tell me that this one's not The Hobbit. And so yeah, uh, I'm really excited to try out this game and to play it more. Uh, it's one of those games that everything I've done in terms of research on the game has led me to believe that this is going to be something that 
I will really enjoy everything I've seen. It's not a super heavy economic game. It really helps introduce some of those principles as well as ways to navigate that kind of engagement with other players before you get into the super heavy, which there's some games for economic games that are more like you're running an Excel spreadsheet. Not the case with this. And so I also thought that it fit that niche in here where I can also introduce new players to expand the horizons. And definitely the art is something that's going to keep them going, what? And just enjoying the experience a little bit more. I love when art helps cultivate that because I'm just going to call it, when I think railroads, I do not think of a lady raccoon with a violin or cello. But I didn't know I needed that in my life but then I found it and I knew I did. Um, so I'm just curious for you, what are your thoughts on this? Is it something that you would like to check out? Um, congrats to Forbidden Games and the release of this game. And I wish you all the absolute best. Uh, just let me know again, what are some uh, games that you have in your collection that you think really bring out some great interactions for yourself or for other people, as well as what are your thoughts on this? And also just drop a line of what other games you might want me to look into. Um, but I really just wish that you have a positive gaming experience with your friends this weekend, and then also just go out and have a positive impact on the world. Thanks.